Hello again. This is part two of the assistive technology consideration steps. And you can see I am on the consideration steps document on item number two. Um, is the student currently using AT successfully and no changes are needed? This is step two on the flowchart. And I'm not going to read this to you, but this tells you what you should do um, and how you should document it on the IEP. Also included here is a link to some sample goals that you can include if needed. If the student is not using AT successfully, the answer is no, and you need to move on to question three. Does the educational team need more information to determine a student's need for assistive technology? Often this is the case. And included in this section is our two links, uh, a, an AT consideration guide and a consideration resource guide. And these documents will help bring you through um, the steps to review what kinds of information you need to address the goals and objectives that need more support for the student. It's in this section also that you're encouraged to reach out to a, uh, an AT specialist. You can reach out to me. Um, I can help you further. Sometimes we need to bring in a consultant and we are currently working with CREC and um, they ha are a terrific resource for us, and I work hand-in-hand -hand with them to support their work here as well. And we make sure that you get the resources and the help that you need so that you can get tools in the hands of the student as quickly as possible. The AT Consideration Guide you will be prompted to make a copy of. It's called the WADI Assistive Technology Consideration Guide, and we model it on the, um, it's Wisconsin, here we go, um, Wisconsin Assistive Technology Initiative. That is the model that we also use, and so we make a, a note of that here at the bottom of this form. This form allows you to list um, the tasks that you uh, want the student to do that he or she is unable to do at a level that reflects his or her abilities. And um, you document by checking each task below and you leave blank any tasks that are not relevant to the IEP. And you fill out the um, columns accordingly. So column A, if the student currently completes a task with special strategies and accommodations, you list them there. Column B, if the student currently completes the task with assistive technology, you describe it in column B. And lastly, in column C, you describe a new or additional assistive technology that needs to be tried out. So examples along the lines of communication, reading, studying, executive function, math, uh, life skills, composing, etc., are are all tasks that are listed along the left-hand side. We come back to this consideration step, and it might seem a little daunting um, to fill out such a document. And feel free to reach out anytime um, uh, to get help with that document. There is a consideration resource guide that can also help you get that um, chart filled out. And this lists common strategies that can be used, um, common assistive technology solutions. And so it's important to note here that there are a number of strategies and tools that have been vetted by professionals in the assistive technology world in their realm of expertise. And so you will find that those tools that have been vetted by professionals are the tools that will um, typically be recommended uh, for the team to trial. And you can get help with that, again, by um, contacting your district AT specialist, or if you're already working with an outside consultant, you can consult with them, and they can help um, direct you to appropriate tools for the skill set that you're looking to support. Okay, we're going to go to the next section.